Hey guys, welcome back to another episode tabletop review. Today I'm bringing you um, a piece of my camera kit. This is a tripod by a company called Vanguard. This is the VO 204AB, which has aluminum materials. Uh, I'm just going to start off with the uh, carrying sack, which is actually very nice. It does feature a ripstop material. Probably ripstop is a material that, just like it means, it stops the rip. So if you were to cut a section of the bag, it would not rip further than what the cut size is. So it that's why it's called ripstop. So it's a very strong material. It's not water resistant, so water can still seep in. But here's just a good overall view of the bag. Very nice. Comes with a carrying strap, so you can sling it over your shoulder and carry it. It's adjustable. Let me go ahead and take it out, show you what it looks like. I've been using this for quite a while. And I have to say I'm very pleased with it. It is extremely lightweight. It's about 2.8 pounds. So it's a great travel tripod. If you're hiking and you like to film while you hike, it's a good thing to bring with you because of its lightweight, compact size. Get it out of this bag. There's some accessories that come with it. I'll explain what this is here in just a second. Get some basic instructions, different ways of setting it up, so on and so forth. Set this to the side, and here it is. Very compact, you can see right there. I wanna say it's probably about 14 inches long, compact. And like I said before, it's made of aluminum, so it's lightweight at 2.8 pounds. The legs have the little clamshell clamps, which is what I like. Some of these tripods have the twist turns. Not too long ago, I purchased a similar version of this with the twist locks. Twist locks are extremely terrible on cheap tripods. They don't lock very well. When you untwist them, it just doesn't lock and I had to return it. And I got the version that has these clamps. And you've got three clamps so the legs can extend like so. And obviously you clamp them down. I'll show some full views. You can see there. And these are aluminum, so they're very strong and lightweight. And you get a very good reach with these. You can use it as a monopole if you wanted to, but clamp down. And that's when they lock, they're very secure. You can see the construction of it. It's very, very nice. I like them. I like these clamps. You just know when you lock it down, you know it's not going anywhere. I've had no problems with it so far. Very, very nice. It does feature, and it comes with a ball head. Let me reposition the camera and show you how this thing opens up. Like you saw there, it's very compact. You can see right there, about 14 inches. And you can see the legs just open up like so. Set it down. This little piece here flips out. Okay. And you adjust the head of it. You can go up and down. So you can adjust the height. As you see there. Fully extended, this tripod is at 53 inches. So let me get that measurement out of the way. At 53 inches, that's the max height. So if you are taller than 53 inches, you'll find yourself hunched over to look through the camera for framing your shot. Or if you're trying to film something that's higher than 53 inches, then this tripod only goes to 53 inches. So if you need something higher than that, uh, you'll have to look at other tripods that can go higher. But the max height is 53 inches. So take that into consideration. I'm just going to start off here at the ball head, which is what it comes with. Ball heads are really nice because you can make adjustments for leveling and whatnot that you can't do with a standard uh, fluid pan head. But uh, the only downside to a ball head is that when you do panning shots, you really don't have as much control as you would with a fluid pan head. So that's just something to keep in mind. But it's not bad. For photography and whatnot, it works well. For videoing, if you're just trying to record a static image or whatnot, but if you're panning left or right, ball head you really can't control it. It's not a fluid ball head. But you just lock it down, make your adjustments, and this is their quick release plate. It's not really a quick release plate. I'm not a big fan of these, but they work well. So you could take your quick release plate off. You can see your screw hole here. It doesn't have a D-ring on this screw hole, so you have to use your fingers to tighten it, and then you have to use like a quarter or a nickel or a screwdriver to get it really tight because it doesn't have that D-ring that you can twist and tighten it. So just keep that in mind. These can be replaced. You can purchase D-rings and replace this if you want to modify it and change it out. you got your little rubber stoppers for gripping. And it basically, there's no right or wrong way to put it in. You can see it's universal around the edges. So there's no wrong or right way to put it in. Basically, it just slides in. And then you screw, screw it down like so. And you've got it. And you also have a little bubble leveler so you can make level shot. On the side here you can see this is where you tighten down the pole so it doesn't come out. You adjust your height level 
and you tighten it down right there. So that's a little feature you get with that. It goes up and down very, very nicely, very smoothly. Now you can also remove the, um, the pan head or the, the pole. And the way you would do that, as you can see, there's a little clip release here. So you first take this out and that allows you to this little end cap off like so. And that comes off. You loosen up this portion here and now it comes out. So you just have the tripod by itself. And now let me show you that little accessory piece that it comes with and I'll show you some of the benefits of this accessory piece. But this is just a little short stubby piece that you screw into your camera. You insert it like so and it does have a certain way of going in. You can see that flat spot there and you put your camera on there and the benefit of that is because these legs open up super wide you can get a really low profile and you can fit your pan head on here if you have one or your ball ball head on there so you can get those really low angle shots and all the legs open up in the same configuration and I'll show you a wider shot here in a second but that's how that works and you just tighten it down and so now you have your uh, little short stubby to get it even lower. Now let me show you how it looks when you really lower it down. The legs have a little push button here. So it's a nice quick release, very convenient, and you can adjust it like so. And you just click it once and you open it again. You click it for another position for a wider, more stable. And then you just click it again and all the legs open up to a full extension. So now you can lay it extremely low to the ground. So this gets you those really wide super angles. You can set your camera on there and do what you need to do to get those low angle shots, video shots, b-roll material, and it works out really well like that. You can take your little dubby head out here, insert it into... So now you've got a low profile tripod to really get those nice shots, those unique specialty shots that are low to the ground. So in this view, you can see I have the tripod opened up so I can create stability depending on wind conditions, the weight of the camera. You can fit a good sized camera on here but not too heavy. You can also hang a extension bags or what we call, um, I think they're called just a weight bag. There's a special weight bag you can purchase for this that will hang underneath to create weight so making the tripod more stable. And I'll leave a link in the description box to go to that particular accessory that works with this particular stand, the VO204, so that you can add weight, rocks or whatnot and it will really help stabilize this tripod you know for heavy wind conditions, heavier cameras and whatnot, and you can do that as well. Now these legs can open up even wider but I've already shown you that so you can just imagine if these legs were um, all the way at their lowest point you can do some you know pretty cool angle shots over rocks, ledges, whatever you need to do to make it even more stable and you can open that up there. But here's just a look at the uh, tripod opened up and stable. Very, very nice. All right, so when you're ready to, you've got your legs collapsed and closed in and you want to get this back down to its compact size, you simply would just release the knob on the side here. And this whole thing just folds down like so. And you now have it all locked in. And then you stick it back in your bag like so. On the handle here, <clears throat> you have this rubber overlay on top of the aluminum and my guess is the benefit of this is that if the tripod is wet this is a really good thing to grip you can hold it like so and do different variable things with it like that plus if it's super cold outside you know that this metal is going to get extremely cold this allows you to grip it without touching the cold metal in you know colder climates so that's pretty much it in a nutshell there's really not a whole lot to this this is a great this is a great traveling tripod, and the reason I say that is because one, it's compact size, and number two, it's lightweight. It's only 2.8 pounds. So let me go over some of the pros and the cons. Obviously, the pros about this is that it's lightweight and it's small. It's got all kinds of versatility for different angle shots that you might want to do for video or for photography. Uh, the only con um, that I can really point out is that it's not very stable when it is fully extended. And what I mean by that is that the poles flex, they vibrate. Under heavy wind conditions, it can, you know, if you're doing long exposure shots, time lapses and whatnot, um, because of the light weight of the materials, it can shake and introduce vibration into your video or your still shots or your long exposures. If you need a tripod that's extremely steady um, under those conditions, this may not be the right one to go with. 
This is more of a traveling tripod, just something to pull out of your bag on the fly, set up a quick shot, boom, boom, you know, you're good to go. Especially for hiking. I do a lot of hiking, so something like this is really versatile for my hiking because it's lightweight and I can fit it in my backpack nice and easily, uh, especially for travel. And that's pretty much about it as far as, you know, the pros and cons. It's just a really simple tripod. So this thing, I want to say, runs about $92, and I'll leave a link below so that you can go check it out if you want to make a purchase. Other than that, there's not much more else to say, so thanks for uh, tuning into this episode of my photography gear that I use. Hopefully this helps you make a good informed decision on purchasing this. So yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell, guys. This is the Vanguard VO204 aluminum tripod, travel tripod. Very, very nice. Um, like I said, I'll leave a link below for you guys to go and purchase this on Amazon.com if you feel this is something that you need and it will benefit your camera or your photography skills. So. With that being said, till we meet again, peace! And um, until we meet again, guys. Oh, that fucking sucked. I'm drawing a blank. So it's a really good traveling tripod. I'm trying to think of something else to say. <laughs>